Lately I've been experimenting with the most basic aspects of radio and you can see I've got a coil here, I've got an output device which I'd love to have a speaker here so you could hear the, the volume of the radio station increasing and decreasing and going away altogether. But if I do that then YouTube will take down my video and there's just no point in having that happen. And then back here I have my antenna and ground. One of the reasons you experiment for yourself is there's a difference between knowing something intellectually and actually seeing it, putting stuff together in your head. And that comes with experience. Uh, a long time ago, a ham friend of mine, very senior guy, told me that you never coil up your antenna in your ground because he said weird things will happen. Now, uh, a while back, just not too long ago, I uh, was building a Vario coupler and that's this device right here. And it's very similar to the variometer that's in front of it. But you say, what's, how, how are those two things related? And where are you going? Are you rambling again? And the answer is no, not really. What's been happening is, yes, my senior ham friend was right. And intellectually, I knew that I'm not supposed to do this. And I kind of knew why. But watch what happens. When I move this coil, see the LED? It goes out, comes back, goes out, comes back. So what does that got to do with the vario coupler? These two coils of wire are doing exactly what this coil and this coil of wire are doing when I turn the shaft. They're going in and out of phase. So there is a, a lesson in, okay, I know something versus I can apply something. Yeah, so that was the first thing I caught on today. Let's look at some other things that uh, I was playing around with. I've been asked a lot about the coils and how important they are. And the fact is that, well, let's just demonstrate again. There's a difference between being told and actually experiencing. Now you can see the light over here. Keep your eye on that. And as I squeeze the coil, it will increase the inductance. And that will bring the windings closer together. And you can see it doesn't take very much and that light goes out. Now I return it back to where it was. We get the light and now let's expand the coil and put some more air between the turns. And then you see what happens. It starts going away. There we go. It starts going away until it ex extinguishes. Um, and then I bring it back to where it was, get a little squeeze to kind of, there we go. So you can see that when I say in my videos about making coils that beauty counts, that keeping those turns tight is important. Yeah, if you leave a little gap in between each of these turns or every now and again, or you know things aren't quite lined up, you can see that it makes, it doesn't, it doesn't take very much either. Uh, you can see the light starts diminishing very quickly. So a little too much, a little too little. So when people are designing these coils, they're planning on the wires being right next to each other. And when they give you the specifications, that's what they're doing. So yeah, the, uh, the spacing on the, on the windings is very important. And usually that should be zero. Uh, the next thing is what it's wound around is also important. So let's take a look at that. The material you wrap the windings around also makes a difference. Things like cardboard, glass, and most types of PVC are pretty neutral. They don't have a lot of impact. But then there's other things that if we watch the LED again, it makes a huge impact. So as I move it towards the side of the coil where the windings are looser, you notice what happens. I'm actually lowering the inductance is what's happening. And as I move it towards the side where the windings are tighter, I'm raising the inductance and getting it back into the sweet spot where it wants to be. And then when I remove it all together, so what this is, is this is a piece of ferrite, they call it. It's a, it's a, an iron oxide compound. And this particular piece happens to be used mostly to get rid of radio frequency. You snap it around a power cord and it will, it will interact with the radio frequency trying to get through and mess up your stereo or whatever. But yeah, that's, that's what this is intended to do, but that's because it reacts with the RFI. And this is why I tell people don't spray paint your coil because your coil will oftentimes have metal particles in it. Some of them are very similar to what this 
what this ferrite is made out of and that will cause problems. Also, like a steel pipe, yeah, that would not work at all. And anything, yeah, anything you wrap it around is going to change it. Some of them more, some of them less. Uh, some of them positively. So in this case, you say, what's the ferrite doing? The ferrite is actually making up, uh, making the coil appear to be uh, more turns than it would normally be. So yeah, uh, this is like a 30 some turn coil and it will react like a, a 40 some turn coil like this one back here, a tightly wound 40. Um, and instead of a 30 wound, a 30 turn loosely wound coil. Yeah, so I can kind of fake the results uh, by doing this and then I can also, as you saw, I can tune uh, with this by using this slug. Let's take a look at how sensitive this can really be. Now I've said that typically they use ferrite, which is an iron uh, oxide and as the core and that doesn't have to be. It, I also said that like if you use painted a painted surface and you wrap it around that it can affect your radio. So let's take this out of here and we will see. I think the exact number of turns of this wire is 32. So let's compare this 32 uh, turn air wound coil against a another type of coil and this one has a copper a copper inside and let's see how much difference now normally copper doesn't make a whole lot of difference with a uh, uh, it doesn't have a strong magnetic presence I should say and I think most of us know that if I substitute this 40 turn for the 32 turn you can see that just eight turns make a difference and also it's the shape this is a ball shape versus the linear shape of that these things all make a difference in the uh, in the coil and the frequency it's going to operate at now if i rotate this you can see the internal copper changing and it also changes our signal right here so this the internal copper windings, which are, you know, hardly magnetic by any stretch of the imagination, also affect the inductance of our, of our coil that we're using. So shape and what it's wound around make a difference. And in this case, even how it's oriented. So when people talk about coils and, you know, does it really matter and all that? Does it matter what I wind it around? Does it matter how thick the wire is? so on so on and how tightly I wind it yeah all those things matter hope you found that useful and interesting in your crystal radio and other experimentations